You remember the 3,600 I was telling you about the population of the shaka of the wolf in Slovakia or in Carpathians. So this, this is the numbers you can see that there. This yellow line is the the number of wolves counted and printed in the in the in the hunting magazine, the periodical hunting magazine. But at the same time, they, besides they print it, they say ah, we might be counting six times more than we should. So maybe the value, the right value, is 601. This because we have 1,800 hunting grounds, and each hunting ground gives the value of how many wolves we have. And normally, one hunting ground, one pack uh, can go to six uh, hunting grounds, and they will be counted six times. And that's why this is different. So maybe we have a reality on the blue, and a fixed issue on the yellow. But the yellow is the one that is popular. So, actual distribution of the wolf in 2016, and these uh, reports and no reports just make, make small changes. So this is 2000, 2016, and this is 2023. Right. When you talk about the shackle, shackle comes in 1989. Uh, there are some publications. So in 2016, it was when the population started to be a little bit larger numbers. If you see uh, 2018, there were 155 uh, the estimation and 21 shackles. So the shackle, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and the actual distribution. This is based on estimations and reports of the hunting grounds where is the, the shackle. So we don't care about so much about the numbers, but we care about the report where the shackle was found. Right? And this is the distribution. <coughs> So, coexistence of the wolf, can wolf control shackle, can wolf not control shackle? In 2016, this was the story, the brown you can have the, the distribution of the wolf, blue the shackle and the red the wolf. This in 2016 and this is already in 2022. So you can see that the wolf permanent, there is no exception of uh, the shackle in that area. Not like here that we have a supermarket free for all carnivores. So, this is a discussion that we want to follow again. Plan, protectionist point of view, we have to save everything. Uh, the golden shackles, what are golden shackles? So we have to protect everything, but many people don't have any clue that we have golden shackles in Slovakia, and the hunters are counting 800, right? Mm -hmm. uh, full protection of species, doesn't matter if the golden shackle comes, doesn't come, let's protect it, right? As a, okay, the mosquitoes, as we all agree, in the first day we should kill them. Right? Even if we put the plot. Um, reality. At well distribution of the shackle and protected areas. So let's think a little bit about what is concerning the research and what is concerning the science. If the shackle is going to make damage in the protected species, in the species that we are investing money from the European Union, Nature 2000, Ramsar, and blah blah blah, all these all these stories. So in this moment, there are shackle presence in this. And maybe this is what we should be concerned on, and this is what we, science, should be tired. Is this happening? Is this a problem? Because, you see, this is the species, the social value of the species. And in this case, we have Antigua, Reptile, Godentia, and uh, you can think that a new it, one species, 800 euros, turtle, 3,000 euros, a road goal is 5,000 euros. A mussel that we saw here, if there are two species, this is one is the most important. 200 euros, one mussel. So the shackle is eating 10 mussels. So we should pay the bill for them. Yes. And as well, the European meat. Uh, maybe extinct species. Is it concerned? Are the shackle big enough to kill a species like this or not? These are the questions. Birds. We talk about cats, but we put the cats aside in this moment and we're concerned on the, on the, maybe the shackle. Because the, the wolf is not a problem till now, right? We don't see the wolf going in each this. This is not prey for wolf, right? And you can see 10,000 euros, 30,000 euros, 10,000 euros. And these are ground nesting birds. These are specific species that the shackle can target and can kill. And these values are not Slovak values, these are European Union values. This is, if you check, these are, these are protected species of social value for Europe, right? So when you, when you have these, you have to 
not, not just in Slovakia, right? So, before I go there, we have as well the protected species, the upper tail, that is the Urugazus. We see already the intrusion of the shuttle in some areas of protection. And you, uh, maybe some of you know the investment of protecting this special species of bird that has as well ground nesting bird. Have a lot of problems with the war, is true, but is the shuttle going to intrude and to make more problems? That's the question. Black grouse, you can see as well some parts. And these are high mountains. This, these are the low tatras. For somebody that knows Slovakia, this is low tatras, this is high tatras. Right? 2,000 and more feet uh, high altitude. So, so let's go to the other side as well. Extremist hunters. Right? Golden shuttle doesn't belong to Slovakia. This is normal, everybody doesn't, doesn't belong anywhere. Uh, the wolf doesn't belong to Slovakia. It's, it's killing everything. Uh, the wolves and shackles are bloody carnivores. They kill everything. They dismantle everything. The system is all wrong. These animals don't belong. Uh, the kill sheep, red deer, roe deer, well, this should be the basis of diet of wolf. They kill it and they complain that they kill the most beautiful handlers. So, the wolf kills the, the species that have that beautiful handful that then we put it in the wolf. Is it fair? Not fair? Your judgment. Okay. So, in the case of the normal hunting, and the case of the normal hunters, they have as well some right, right? Because they pay the renting of the hunting ground, they have responsibility on the hunting ground, and as well sometimes they make investment in some species that they hunt. So we have to think about it. It's not just hunters are killing everything, but they want to kill everything. They make investments, and as well, they, they invite people from outdoor, they bring it inside, and they show, they kill, and all that. But red deer, this is the distribution of red deer. You can see the black, the black Los Angeles. The blue is the, where the shackle is, and the red is where the shackle is inside the territory. And you see this in the red deer. We see this in the road deer. We see this in wild boar, fallow deer, that is introduced species just for hunting purposes. Move long, the rabbit, hare, the grey partridge, the pheasants, that they kill more than 100,000 per year, and they invest in the repopulation of the, of the species. The shark on this is as well eating them. I don't know, there is no diet analysis. So you cannot tell the, that the shark is the guilty. So, if we just don't have data, we are another person with opinion. So we have to work on it, and the science have to target these this values. The wolf and the shackle, strengths, opportunities. We all know adaptability of the species, the transport of the species, the uncertain of the numbers, the risk of conflict as a weakness, opportunities. This maybe is what we have to target more. And this is what, in terms of my studies, we are targeting. What are the sanitary effects? What are the ecosystem services that the wolf can provide to the system? Right. And as well, the threats, hybridization is one of the threats here for the species. So we kill everything? No? So, let's see. so this was the first part. And then I'm going to tell you about the sanitary effects and how we get to this information. We know already, and this is based on the wolf, because in Slovakia we don't have data about the shark. So we know about in the US, the chronic waste disease, the wolf decreased the, the influence and the transmission of the disease from health to health. The anthrax in the bison, the wolf decreased. There were findings of killed of wolf with the individuals that were affected, so it was effective. We saw the tuberculosis in the wild pig, and we saw, for example, the palalomitosis in the Hungary that affected the old deer. is a benign cancer that uh, the, the animals start growing cancers everywhere, and uh, they even lose the vision. And so, of course, they are good prey for the wolf, and as well for the hunters. They are removing the sick individuals and leaving the good individuals. Uh, and increasing as well the trophy hunters. Right. <coughs> So, we thought about it, can we see this trend that we saw colleagues find in that other, other places with the African swine fever? And again, this is as well a good book that you can 
find out that she's a little bit bad people and it's interesting for the education of the people that we work with. Can you hear me? So, our very first question is to ask, what does the wolf eat? Is it uh, shoes in the wild boar? Not shoes in the wild boar, it's preferred, is it not? Then how the wolf selects the habitat? So like, where is the wolf there? And is it influencing the African swine fever? And the second, the third question, it was really the limitation of the infection when the wolf is present. Our hypothesis, of course, based on, on, on previous studies, we could already think a little bit about it. There were some hypotheses that were based on uh, opinions, but uh, they were fundamental opinions, right? Like, for example, the, the infection of wolves. There were some studies that were based just on, on temporal or on special data, so we try to make it a little bit larger. All starts with the diet. For the diet, we collect 321 scats from 2017. We made all the tests on particular uh, cells of analysis of the air. Is that the screen test we did, we did on the hairs and so Allah it was just mentioned about? <coughs> we have a three areas of study. We have a protected landscape area here. We have a known protected area and a national park. Right. And that, that third part, the fourth point, is another national park away from the, the, the region that we, we are, but it was much valuable to get a little bit of that maybe there are something else to do. We calculate frequencies of, of biomass and all this, frequency of occurrence and biomass. Second question is how the habitat was distributed. So we use presence and absence data. We collect 1,300 records of wolf presence. And we generate, based on the transects, 20,118 points of absence location. I can explain later how we do this if, if that is a question about it. So we, we create ones and zeros and we make the statistics. So we use topographic variables, habitat variables, and anthropogenic. <coughs> the total, I think, 12 or 14. There were some more that we used, but because they were, they were correlated, they were, they were removed. Like, for example, we, we, we used the land cover, but we removed it because it was, it was uh, correlated with the, with the night light. And the night light was more important for the, for the study. And then the third question. It is the, the wolf uh, limitation for the wild boar. As you see, we use a bionormal regression, and we use 322 African spine fever positive cases in an area of 6,000 kilometers that was coincident with our area. Here is the, the spread, spreading of the disease, epidemia, endemia, and then the disappearing or not, depending on the, on the population, right? It's still not finished, and that's why this is still in preparation. And this study, I forgot to mention, this is with the three more colleagues, the Francisco Alvarez from Portugal, Dr. Francisco Alvarez, Dr. Kropil from Slovakia, and my colleague, Dr. Kerskov, as well from my department. So, in this case, because we didn't have cases that were not uh, infected with the disease, we made a random selection based on the numbers that were reported as non-disease. Non, non, uh, non so this is the data that we collect, as you could see, this is again the protected landscape area, the national park, and the heavy metal protection. And you see that there is some, something there that, that can, can bring already some idea of, of our work. So in this case, we use the sex, age, time, space, and we use the wolf predation list. And I will explain how we, how, we, how we are doing it, and how we are going to use it for our, our future habit. For the diet, we made the wolf selection. And you can see that in the protected landscape area, in the Pepper Mountains and the Monai Plateau, the, wolf, the, the wild boar was a selected species. So, it was some beginning of the step to know that we can have some proof of an African swine fever controlled by the wolf. And like you see, just the broad polony was not selected. Basically, it's totally different environment, and maybe it's not even a, a good environment for, for all the species and for wild boar. And it's possible for the dispersion of the wild boar is totally different from the areas of the mountain areas of the Kappa. The part of the selection of habitat, you can see that we generate all the variables, and the most significant 
was again anthropogenic factor. The night lights that is, uh, is uh, corresponding to the presence of people and the hunting. Because in the period of our study, it was possible to hunt wolves from November till the 15th of January. So we have that in count, and we see that there is a quite significant. And this in the breeding time of the wolf, right? The mating time when the hormones change, the pairs are getting together, and the, they are in the, of, uh, in the possibility of, uh, of being killed on hunting. So it was influenced in the selection of habitat. You can see the night lights effect that in all the three seasons that we used, we used the breeding season, that was the part of the mating <coughs> till the form of the cups. We use the pup raising, that is the, the part that the pups are depending on the family, mostly of the mother, for the milking and as well for feeding, till the end of, uh, of uh, September or October. And the non-breeding is maybe when the pack got, gathers together to pass the winter, hunting together and all these all these vegetables. So you can see that in the, all the three seasons, there were quite big influence on the nightlife. So wolves avoid people. At least in Kappa. <laughs> uh, this was the difference of the, of the hunting. You can see that wolves during the hunting season would be more present, uh, would select more habitats near the water, um, and vice versa when they were hunting. But this is as well concerning the, the environment and concerning that the most uh, parts of the, the water are connected with main roads or forest roads. So there is a little bit of, of the correlation with that part. This is the land cover. You can see that during the breeding season, they are much more selective, selective in terms of the work area to shoot than when it's not, not the, the breeding season. So they are preparing for denning. They are much concerned where the bulk moves. What, what kind of forest, the seedless conifers, you can see. They are quite valuable. But then in the pup raising season and non breeding season, they are much more quite open for where to move. Normally, they, when, they, when they have the den afterwards, they might be able to change the, the, the breeding area, and it's called the rendezvous site. So instead of staying in the den, they can move around and select. But mostly they change, and there are some studies, I don't have the, the, which studies are, but there are some studies that they change frequently three times per, per year uh, from den site to rendezvous site. So this was the habitat selection during breeding season. The wolves are looking for them, the wolves are walking around, marking their territory. So you can see that the, the, they select a lot of habitats, like I was telling you about land cover, different, uh, different locations. So they are looking for a location. And in this time, is the time that probably they are not being hunted. So they have the main area. The pub raising, you can see quite distribution. The pack sometimes even split one something here, one something there. So you can see that distribution is quite quite uh, large because there is no, no problem, they are not being uh, hunted. <coughs> this is the non breeding season when they are being hunted. So you can see that the that the global that big space that was used now is coming becoming shrink a little bit in terms of comparison of non breeding season. This is this is the period of transformation from <coughs> from hunting season to the, to the non hunting season, and you can see that it's already increased a bit. And if we look for the rest, that is quite a big difference that hunting really influences people. And you can see these white spots are the cities, villages, and all around. So you can see that wolves are not so much there. So there are, there are some reasons for, for the thing. And this <coughs> is the wolf predation risk. The habitat selection where the wolf select areas is the areas that the prey have a risk of being predated, right? So is the, uh, the predation risk is just a simple transformation of words because habitat selection means risk for prey. And it was with one of these uh, variables that we use for populating the African swine So this is another book that you can join in your collection. <laughs> three orange and each one is a very interesting story. Uh, so we calculate time of since infection, and this map in this graphic is basically uh, how the infection was, was naturally distributed in the, in the time. Uh, and you can see that these results that we have is basically very similar with the, with the true uh, 
uh, results found uh, from, the, from the, the incidence of Africa's wave fever, the positive cases. Uh, it was supposed to come back. This is the distance to human settlement. So as you can see, the high incidence of African swine fever is near people. And very, pro very few probability of incidence in the areas very far away. In this case, we tested in 10, 10 kilometers, it's 10,000 meters. So far away from people, there is few incidence, and that can be a justification because the wolf is as well far away from people. So there are some, some cases there. And this is the wolf predation risk. Areas with low predation risk, high probability of influence of the African swine fever in the wild boar, and far away from far away from wolf predation risk, the disease was not found. Right? And this is the proximity to species. This is uh, how, how the, the distance influences the transmission from one wild boar infected to another one. So we can see that in the near, in near close uh, populations of wild boar or, or groups of wild boar, the incidence was much more higher than when they are far away from each other. Natural, right? The, 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 the disease doesn't doesn't travel like just like this. And and we can justify as well, or we can argue that the wolf killing a wild boar and transporting pieces of the wild boar around the corner it doesn't really pass the, 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 the disease is very very easy. So. Then this is the part of the, the, the age categories, and like as well normal, the big adults, healthy adults, that just didn't get the African swine fever. We can mix a little bit and think about the corona, that as well the healthy people, or had more healthy people didn't have effect, the effect of the, of the corona. Of course, some people get the disease or get the point, but if it comes to a point that is just endemic, it passes and, and just so. The main problem was the piglets. So the piglets were the first ones to die. And we cannot find it in the, in the, in the field so much, but we get the records of the piglets, and most of the piglets were, were very infected with African special. So this is a little bit, again, the temperature, with the higher temperature, the disease will pass more. Um, the forest, when there is no forest core coverage near the villages, near the cities, it was where the incidence and probability of the, of the African swine fever. As well, the dry metal productivity is as well concerned with the, with the values of where, where is the food available. And again, the high dry metal productivity, this is in the middle of the forest where the food is all available, but there was not so much incidence or probability of African swine fever infection. So, what is the wolf paper in this? You can see this is the red line, is the natural without the influence of the wolf. And this is the, 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 in terms of timing. And the blue line is where the wolf is. I will show you what, what, what this means. And this is as well the influence of transmission from one individual of wild board to another one in terms of distance. The red line is where without predation risk. And the blue line is predation risk. So these results. No. This, this difference of the wolf predation and not predation, where is the wolf, the risk of, of, of incidence of African swine fever was three times less than where the wolves are. Right? So that is a quite significant paper of the wolf uh, incidence. And this is the, the increase of the disease, I think missing something here. March 21, you can see how the disease starts spreading in the, in the territory. This is the, the protected landscape area here, and here is the national park. You can see from 21 till 22 that disease goes around where people live, locations, the white spots, so, but not in the main, the main area. So June, you can see all the increase of the, the disease, the spreading of the disease but not going to the, to the new So this starts showing that the wolf actually had some paper with the, with the, with the, to control the, the, the degree of African swine fever. And this was our last, last map. Uh, as a black spot, you can see that is the, the high predation risk, uh, and then the other one, the high incidence of the African swine fever. So we can see that very few points uh, match 
maybe this area here is the only point that are really a matching of the wolf presence in the African swine fever. But because this is well very strict or very very specific area of extra hunting, extra feeding, uh, and a, a, other points that I, I won't, I, because I don't have that about it, I, I don't want to refer more than this. So actually, wild boar, the wolf selects wild boar, habitat selection influenced by people, and because the wild boar prefers the presence of people, the wolf decreases the probability of passing the African spine fever. This result is a little bit of the beginning, because the African swine fever is still present, still uh, making some tests about the African swine fever, and we are equating that the African swine fever will expand to the country to be able to make, and as well, a country analysis. To avoid maybe misunderstandings and to make it, uh, the, the right assumptions, like we found in the that different national park, that the, it was not selected the, the wild board, maybe there it will be different. So, but we are in this moment waiting for the rest of the data until the, the, all, the, all the, the parts of the wild war are, are analyzed, right? So future research, we need to do more tests, we need to do more analysis, especially the diet, because our study con concentrates from September till uh, March. We need to make a diet analysis of the rest of the year, but it's very difficult as well to get the scats for making analysis good into summer. Maybe the, the dogs will be a, a good solution for us. Because the wolves have a free range, uh, they can travel everywhere. And in the summer, normally they, have the, they, they are using the, the forest roads to try to, to pass it. And it is not easy, but it's possible to catch. Anyway, in my study, I analyzed the, the collection of data with snow and the collection of data without snow. And without snow, it was quite uh, fewer the amount of the collection of data, but we could make an implement of 20% of the data in the areas of known uh, snow. So 20% is always useful, especially when we make a diet a genetic analysis, that we can uh, calculate where, where, where the, the individuals are, where the facts are doing, what they are utilizing. So this is one, one, one of the things that we have to do. Uh, then we have to test more the risk and prevalence of African swine fever, and I think we have to input the shuttle in this area. So we as well, we have to calculate the data from the, the, the shuttle. We have to start monitoring the species in terms of scientific based data, not just by the, the numbers and the, and the observations that the hunters do. Uh, we have to create this based on scientific data, right? It is not just one data collecting here, one data collecting there. You will see a camera trap, you see the other camera trap. No, it, it needs to be a little bit more based. You need to be, be, be systematic to create real estimates and reliable estimates. And, and like this, we will be able to assess the real damages. Because if we make a diet of the shackle, then we can realize what is the shackle eating. Especially like I told before in these nature protected areas. Because these animals are irreplaceable, and like the mink was extinct, other species can go extinct. Right? We see in Africa the rhinos and all that stuff connected with the, with the anthropogenic factors, but here we have animal animal uh, damage to or, or, or interaction. Uh, and other thing, it was one thing that I present, I, I didn't put it this time, it was the last slide I put it in the, in the Greece last time I was here. Uh, and and, and it, this is the border. I think as a, as a countries we have many borders, uh, especially for example in Germany we have how many borders inside your country. In uh, Slovakia we have 1,800 uh, hunting grounds that count the things independently in different methods. So we have to unite them and animals, they don't have rules, they don't have borders, so they, they travel uh, as long as it's, it's not fenced by humans. They can they can travel. One 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 of the points of the fences is it good if it is not, but for animals they, they, they see the fence maybe as a threat. Um, we have to create and implement at least in Slovakia, maybe with the help of neighboring countries, uh, with the experience that you have, the increase of of, of animals being hunted in Hungary and, and Bulgaria. What is the factor that they have more shackle than fox? This is a question that, that I used to as well, I, I, I asked you a video, because I used to ask to the hunters. 
do we want the explosion of the species and we want to make a recreation hunting of a species, well, it's okay. So if that is what you want, is the direction, let's make a lot of animals to kill, is like as well we presented uh, about the population in uh, Germany. Is it a lobby that they are creation, creating the, 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 or, or, or facilitating investing on the wolf to make the hunting of the wolves? Is it a lobby or not? Is, let, let's see. But I think we, we, the research was based on scientific data again, and I like to, to reference that, not just in opinions, because each one can have their own opinion. So when this, this part as well, in the, in the action plan, in terms of the golden shackle, we have to as well to adjust our, our, uh, our action plan for the wolf that have many, many mistakes and is done not based just in the science. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for your attention.